Hi, welcome back to Access Science. I'm John, and today we have something very special. If you look at what we have on the box, it says Magnum Research. For those of you keen into the gun world, Magnum Research means one and one thing only. Desert Eagle. Desert Eagle. Now, the issue with this gun is that uh, ownership has told me not to touch this one and they told me specifically so you know what that means today we're asking for forgiveness not permission so here we have R3D 2.0's for the Desert Eagle this one's in the 50 AE and we also make them for the 44 Magnum um, these are brand new hot off the press box is still warm uh, what you'll get in the box is you will get obviously a rear sight. Our front sight we'll be installing is green. Allen key. And we have everyone's least favorite Loctite. For a written version of these instructions, you can get them at this QR code, and it'll also have a link to this video for anyone else who needs it. So what you'll need for the install today is an assorted set of punch punches. This is a nylon punch, not a glue stick. Uh, hammer, a uh, soft bristled cleaning brush, your favorite brand of gun scrub, and some paper towels. First thing you wanna do is take your gun apart. Ensure there's nothing in there. If there was in there, you'd know it because that bullet is large. Uh, you should refer to your own owner's manual for disassembly. I will do my best to show you for this gun, but there's a button here and this lever. To give it a slight pull. Oh, I was pushing it the wrong way. That happens. Now, my barrel's ejected. There is a groove to line up here get your barrel out there's your barrel then this slides directly off the front uh, one thing to note with these this retaining pin is very easy to lose you make sure you hold on to this the first time I took one apart all I heard was the bouncing across the room and then it was a 45 minute ordeal to find so here's our front sight here's our rear sight and the sights will be installing so as I mentioned before, they told me I'm not allowed to touch this gun, so I have to leave no trace. So I am actually taking extra steps to ensure that I do as little to the gun as possible. Because when people start pointing fingers, I want to be pointing fingers with them. I don't know who touched it. I don't know. That was, that was Billy Jim. Billy Jim took it out to the range, even though you told us not to touch it. There's no one here named Billy Jim. We'll be starting with the nylon punch. See how tight these sights are in. Uh, sometimes with these Desert Eagles, they'll be uh, not so much on the sight itself, but the gun itself will have a direction which the sight was installed. So the female dovetail on the gun will be, I'm exaggerating my hands obviously, but it will be like this. So if you can see it with your eyes, then that's the way you want to drive it out towards the more open end. Um, this one looks pretty symmetrical. And I've got my crooked eyes on today. We will drive it out. Rotating a little bit. Let's see. Oh, when in doubt, make sure you can find your fingers. Give it an extra little twist. I'm going to do something I do not recommend, but there we go. Oh, look at this. They're going to be mad at me. Zoom in right there. And that is just strictly the, what, Cerakoting being pulled off the gun. This happens sometimes when you have these high finish guns. Uh, don't worry. The new sight you put on will cover it up. At least that's what I tell myself. But we're committed now, so we're doing it. Hmm? Found my finger. 
Oh, I don't know what that was. Wiped away. Oh, ladies and gentlemen at home, that's what we call rust. So on this one, I've got um, safety up. So it should be in fire mode. It just allows you to grab more of the receiver, uh, receiver slide. These are weird because they're designed like a rifle, but you hold them in your hand. I don't know. People at home will correct me. That's all right. Tell me how much you don't like the way I call stuff. Based on the 44 mag that I did, um, I assume their factory install direction installed from this way. So this rear is most likely like this because the other gun was. So I assume the two lines are the same. So I'll be driving it out the exact same way I did the front. And it's more square, so it should hold better in the vise. Uh, one thing you don't want to do is squeeze too hard on the front uh, towards the barrel of the gun. It is just two thin walls here. You want to make sure you're grabbing the meat of the slide. As you can see, I hit a little bit harder every time up until I find my finger. There's no way they put this one in the other direction. I refuse to believe. I found my finger. Take it up a notch. Well, that sounded like a solid hit. I hit my hand again. At least one more time before I finish this. Yeah, you see this right here? I originally thought that this was the coating coming off the gun. Luckily, I've never been more happy to be wrong because it wipes right away. One important thing, uh, as we pointed out earlier, we have a little bit of rust from this one not being oiled properly. That's because they don't let me touch it. They told me not to touch it. I couldn't take care of it. I swear I like this gun. Just want to spray a little bit of your gun cleaner. Give it a few wipes. A little bit of dirt comes out. Another thing too, if you have an old toothbrush, that's a good thing to use. An old toothbrush to get down and just try and wipe the edges. You'd be amazed at what an old toothbrush can clean. I mean, you know, Forrest Gump cleaned the entire bathroom with a toothbrush. We got dirt coming out. More scrub. Looks pretty clean. And now the rear has a good bit of gunpowder in it. Your level of sanitation as to your desired level of sanitation. The more you clean it, the better it may work. Not may, the better it will work. But uh, dairy grade finish not required. And you'll see a little bit of uh, marking on the inside of the dovetail. And this, this will all be covered up. I swear at the end of the video, they'll never even know I changed the sights. Except for, you know, the fact that the sights are different. But that's not for management. Management will never know. That's between you and me. And so this looks like dirt, but this is actually a little bit of surface coating that came off of the factory site. Uh, that means that this gun is really well coated. I mean, this stuff is tough. Uh, I don't want to test how tough it is. Take my word for it. Now one thing to remember with these Desert Eagles is that even though we don't have an install direction on the site itself, this dovetail will be installed. So we uninstalled uh, to the right-hand side of the gun, looking down the barrel. And so we, when we install, we want to install from this side, the same side. There go. I got past that little bit of a hang-up. I've got it about a third of the way installed before I've even hit it with a, a punch. And these are very light taps. Shouldn't take too much pressure. If you are not lined up properly, you'll end up overhitting this one. Uh, when you have these heavily rounded 
slides, you got to be careful about your alignment with your dovetail. Now I've stepped it up a notch, I'm swinging a little harder, but I'm still using my softest punch. That's how you find your finger. Look, I found it. This one is hard to tell if I've got it in the middle or not. I've got my pocket flashlight. Can you see this good? Mm -hmm. And it looks pretty much centered. Maybe I could drive it in just a little bit more, just looking at this gap here versus this gap here. Give it just a little bit more of a tap. See if I can find my finger again. Have I mentioned how much it's worth paying a gunsmith? <laughs> That's a joke. Uh, one thing I'll have to do is this um, punch has been used a little bit. I'll have to clean up these edges and then we'll get back with this. So I went and cleaned up. Now I have a nice hard edge. I just took my knife. Uh, it's nylon, so you can just cut it. Um, and I'd, I'd like to restate, I'm making this harder on myself because I cannot scratch this gun. This is a, a, a this gun right here, if it gets scratched, they will actually be angry with me. I'm not just saying this for camera guys. Like. I'm going out on a limb. I'm risking life for you guys for the content at home. Uh, but I would have upgraded to brass and already had this in if I wasn't worried about my surface finish. When in doubt, uh, adjust your angle of attack. But you're making airplanes. We're not making airplanes. We're I'd be quite upset if that's all I needed right there. I quit. Now, you'll remember I'm using my calibrated eye, but a good way to hold it on in front of you, just make sure it looks pretty centered on the gun. Sometimes it's hard to, you know, because people will see you do something a certain way, uh, and then you manage to do it, and then they're trying to perfectly copy you hitting stuff you know, like flip it around, get your leverage, rotate around. We're doing a certain thing a certain way for the camera, but I mean, just remember, like you've got the freedom to flip, turn, stand on the table, not recommended. Uh, so this is a set screw we use for the rear uh, and the supplied tool. You wanna make sure when you're installing this, your set screw is not sticking out of the bottom. So I believe that is righty tighty lifty loosey. You wanna loosen it into the site. Tight, loose. You want to loosen it all the way out of the site. Now we uninstall this one this direction if you see here. Oh, like a glove. So here you've got a perfect example of what I was trying to explain earlier. The, the dovetail itself is tapered. I can't get it all the way through, but it slides in, no hammer needed. And so it's a good bit wider on this end, you see how wiggly this is? And then as we go in, you cannot get it all the way through. I mean, you could, but you should. My kind of install right there. Um, with this one, it'll be really easy to get the center lined up. So I'm gonna align my center based on my view window and uh, my uh, firing pin. I assume that the firing pin's just about as in the middle of the gun as I can. Then I'm going to turn it with the small end. Remember that one, everyone. Turn it with the small end. Tighten it down. Now I've got it tight with the small end. Small end is tight. Take it out. And I'm going to show you this. Do not over tighten this, but you want to get it pretty tight. Uh, you're going to 
give it just about between a quarter and an eighth of a turn. I'm bad at fractions, but I believe that's 316. 316 of a turn calibrated. So one thing you do not want to do, uh, as you see, we've got brand new Loctite here. Give it a little twist, that breaks it off. Now you've got a nice spout. One thing you do not want to do is Loctite down in this screw hole. The screw hole gets it in position and gives it a secondary point of contact. Uh, for Loctite, oops. no scratches. All right, we're good. Oh, sorry guys, I had a minor heart attack. You had to give me a second. They told me not to scratch it and then I dropped a gun. Uh, what you want to do is run Loctite all along the backside. Nice and extra thick. Just the way I like my sandwiches. Get a little down on the sides. And so now we've already seen that um, the rear sight is really easy to move. I am not sure the accuracy from the factory about middling the sights, but your front sight is pretty tight. So if you need to do adjustments, you can do it in the rear. Uh, I recommend going to the range, making sure your rear sight is zeroed where you want it, and then Loctiting after the range, just because this site is very easy to move. If you Loctite before you go to the range, you'll have to uh, have a hammer and punch to move this site around. Even if you loosen this screw, the Loctite will hold it in place. Loctite after you confirm that it's shooting where you want it to shoot. And for those of you shooting the 50 AE, Good luck finding and fording bullets. Uh, the front sight is pretty standard. Um, dab along top of the dovetail. Get some down side. And I will be taking extra special care on this particular gun to make sure I clean it good because if they can see that I've messed with it, other than me dropping it on the floor, banging it against itself, smacking my hand with a hammer. I mean, there'll be signs, but they just can't be obvious. No, I didn't drop it, I swear, I didn't touch that gun. Uh, once you get your Loctite in place, you wanna let it sit for about five minutes. This allows the Loctite to get down into all the nooks and crannies. Loctite will only cure with air, so um, if, if you get any under the dovetail, it will not actually cure. It'll stay liquid under the dovetail. Um, so once you give it five minutes cure, then we'll do our cleanup. What we wanna do now is just wipe the excess away. Uh, the amount that you wipe away and the cleanliness of your gun is based on personal preference. If you wanna just do one quick wipe across all the surfaces, that's up to you. I have to clean this one good, so we'll spend a little more time cleaning this one. I've also got some, some special Q-tips that I'll use that have a sharp point that allow me to really get down. Look at that, scratching the gun again. Oh, man. You know, like, um, when you're doing something and you don't have any restrictions and you just fly through it like it's a normal day and everything goes smooth and well and there's no issues... And then somebody comes up to you the next day and says, like, hey, I need you to make sure that this doesn't happen. And then that thing happens and it just keeps happening. And you're like, oh, my God, I didn't scratch anything yesterday. And today I bumped the gun six times just because I'm not supposed to. If it didn't matter, it would be a perfect cleanup. These are my magic pointed Q-tips. You can use just the round side. You can round side, wipe it. Luckily this gun doesn't have a lot of complex curves, so it's easy to get down in there. Just give it a good wipe. But I will be using my pointed side just to make sure. I mean, I'm spending all this extra time and the owner of this gun didn't even oil it before they put it up and then had rust down in the dovetail. So if anything, I'm doing them a favor. And that's what I'll tell myself to help me sleep at night. 
goes to the front. I'm setting that off camera just so that I don't bump it because I know that I will. And like I say, the cleanliness of your gun strictly depends on your personal preference. Once you let the Loctite sit, it will get down everywhere it needs to get and it will hold your sight in place. Uh, some of our round counts we've got up to with Loctite in sights is upwards of 5,000 rounds before we ran out of money or ammo, whichever one comes first. So if you lock tight your sight, it will not come out. Mm. Uh, I will be using some cleanup just because I have to. And I, I've had guns that I put Loctite on it and then got distracted, walked away, came back, and it was caked on like you saw in earlier whenever I first applied it, and it hardened like that. And I mean, it you know you can clean it off. You can get the gun, the sight out of the gun. Uh, all these things are possible. It just uh, requires a little more elbow grease. Mm. But I have taken sights out like that and shot them, and they. I mean, if you need to hit your target, you can hit your target. Take my pointed tip, get a little bit of cleaner on it. And guys, I'm telling you, if you spend the time to do it, you'll never even know the site is Loctited. Say so it's all about how much time you want to spend with it. If you're looking on there, you can't even tell that there was Loctite applied. But I guarantee you it's down in the dovetail and it is holding this site in place. My favorite thing about gun people is that they're all different and unique. So one person will pull out a pristine gun that they shoot all the time because one of the things they like to do is clean their gun while they're watching TV. And then the next person will show up at the range and they've got a 20 year old gun and they're like, you clean guns? Wait, you have to clean them? No oh, man, the Cosmoline, it's a lubricant. You just leave the Cosmoline on. Makes the AK run better. <clears throat> like I said, I'm spending extra time on this one to get it clean. Just like I spent extra time on the install to make sure I didn't scratch the gun. Everything is about how much you're willing to put into it. I guess that's a, a life philosophy, right? Like you only get out of it what you're willing to put into it. So if you're not willing to put in a bunch of hard work, you won't get good results. Of course, I say hard work. Hard work's a relative term. It's not hard to locate your fingers. But it's hard to locate your fingers and then keep going. This has been our install for R3D 2.0s on the Desert Eagle. This is the 50 AE and 44 mag versions. Uh, if you're signed up at our newsletter, which you can find on the back side of your insert, uh, you'll hear about new products such as these as soon as they launch. Also launching at the same time as the R3D 2.0, we have a big dot version for the Desert Eagle. The install will be exactly the same. It's just a different site system. Um, we also have more information on our website about big dots uh, for those of you who are not familiar. Thank you. They'll never know.